Hello students and listeners at home. You are welcome to today's online teaching. My name is Okeke Evangeline from Christian Religious Studies Department of St. Charles College, Onecha. Our topic for today will be on call to service and life in God's service. But before we proceed, let us look at the specific objectives. They are by the end of the lesson, the students will be able to 1. Explain the meaning of service 2. Narrate the sale of Joseph into Egypt 3. Mention examples of people who served in the Bible 4. List the lessons from the service of Joseph and Ruth 5. Mention the moral lessons 6. Describe the call of Christians to God's service and humanity. 7. Write down the problems of service. 8. Relate the reward of services. The definition proper. The meaning of service. The word service can be explained in various ways. It is the act or means of serving others. It is the work carried out for all on behalf of another. It is the act of serving God or work done for someone. Also duty done for someone, a helpful act. It may also be a work done for one's community or country, which will be recognized and most often appreciated. Services focuses both on God and humanity, but in our lesson today, we are going to narrow it down to services to God. Joseph sold to Egypt, Genesis 37, 12 to 36. Now, let us listen to the story of how Joseph was sold into Egypt, which led to Joseph serving or listening to the call of God to service to humanity. Joseph was one of the 12 sons of Jacob, Isaac's son, son of Rachel, one of Jacob's wives. At about the age of 17, Joseph took part in shepherding his father's flock in his brother's company. He drew reports to their father, Jacob, his brother's misconduct. Joseph was a favorite son of Jacob, his father, because he was the son of Jacob's old age. Jacob's love for Joseph made his brothers to hate him, especially when their father made a long robe with sleeves for Joseph. Joseph also had the gift of divine knowledge through dreams. Joseph dreams that 11 sheep were bind down to his own sheep, which meant that his brothers would worship him. He also had another, where the sun, the moon, and 11 stars bowed down to him. And Joseph told his brothers the two dreams. Jacob rebuked Joseph when he sensed that the Joseph dream pointed toward Joseph being the ruler over his household. Joseph then kept it to his mind. The brother's hatred toward Joseph made them nickname him Joseph the Dreamer. One day, Jacob sent Joseph out to go and seek his brother's welfare in the field. When Joseph got to Shechem, a man informed him that his brothers had gone down to Dothan. At Dothan, his brothers conspired to kill him, immediately they cited him. Reuben saved Joseph's life by suggesting that Joseph be cut into the dry pits so as to obey the divine injunction that said shed no blood 
Reuben's intention was to bring Joseph out of the pit and restore him back to their father. When Joseph got where his brothers were, they stripped him off of his robe and cast him into a pit. Then they sat down to eat the food he brought to them. Why in the pit? Judah suggested that Joseph be sold to the approaching Ishmaelite traders coming from Gilead with their camel loaded with spies, Bam and men who were heading towards Egypt. They drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites. Having listened to the story of how Joseph was sold to Egypt, how the brother conspired against him because of envy and jealousy, they sold Joseph to Egypt. Then, students, let's now listen to how Joseph served in Egypt. You can see this in Genesis 41, 37 to 57. Under the blessings of God, Joseph was quickly entrusted with the entire administration of Potiphar's household. The wife of Potiphar wanted to commit immorality with Joseph, but he refused her advances. Genesis 39, 7-10 In act of revenge, Potiphar's wife accused him of rape, and Joseph was thrown into prison. Genesis 39, 9-20 God's grace was with Joseph, because soon, the jailer, like Potiphar, recognized Joseph's admirable character and put him in charge of the entire prison. Soon, for some reasons, the anger of Pharaoh was aroused against his chief baker and the butler, and he sent them to prison. Genesis 40, 1-4 Why in the prison? These men had mysterious dreams. God gave Joseph the ability to correctly interpret each dream. Three days later, on Pharaoh's birthday, Pharaoh dealt with the baker and the butler exactly as Joseph had predicted. Pharaoh had two dreams, about seven years of great plenty and 11 years of great famine throughout all the land of Egypt. These dreams troubled Pharaoh. He called on all his magicians and wise men, and none of them could. Then one of his servants, the butler, spoke to Pharaoh about Joseph's amazing talents. Joseph was then called out of the prison to appear before Pharaoh and interpret those dreams. He interpreted the dreams and counseled Pharaoh on appointing a wise man to serve and gather maize and store during the seven years of great plenty. As a result, Pharaoh decided to put him over the whole of his kingdom. He was in charge of the Egyptian treasure. These things were happening when Joseph was already at the age of 30. So, Joseph became the prime minister of Egypt. Pharaoh made him the second in command. He also gave him a wife by the name Asenath, daughter of Potiphar, the priest. He had two sons whose name were Manasseh and Ephraim. Let's listen to another story of the service of God and humanity. Ruth says her mother-in-law, Ruth 11, 7 to 18. Another story of a diligent service was that of Ruth. There was a great famine in Israel, and Elimelech, who lived in Bethlehem in Judah, took his family and fled to Moab. 
Ruth 1, 1 to 2. His family were made up of his wife, Naomi, and his two sons, Mahlon and Chilon. It happened that while Elimelech and his family were living in Moab, Naomi lost her husband and was left with her two sons, who got married to two mobile girls. These girls were called Alpha and Ruth. After about 10 years in Moab, Naomi's two sons died, and Naomi was left alone without husband or sons. When the woman, Naomi, heard that the famine that made them travel to Moab was over, she decided to go back to her people. Ruth and Alpha decided to go with Naomi. On the way, Alpha went back while Ruth persisted to follow Naomi to the end and said, let me go with you. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. Ruth 1, 16 to 17. Thus, Ruth decided to leave and save her old mother-in-law selflessly at Bethlehem. She was obedient to Naomi's instructions until Boaz married her. She gave birth to Obed, who became to Naomi a restorer of life and nourisher of her old age. Ruth became the ancestress of David and of Christ. Students, having listened to the two stories of how Joseph and Ruth served God and humanity, now let's listen to the lessons from the service of the Lord. Every good service has its reward. Joseph was obedient and persevering in the service of the Lord, and he was elevated. One, Pharaoh appointed Joseph to a high office and placed a signet ring on his finger. Two, Joseph was also dressed in beautiful clothes and had a royal golden chain hung on his neck. Three, he was also given the chariot of a second in command in Pharaoh's administration. Four, Pharaoh also decreed that all shall bow down to him. These are the gates of good service in the Lord. If we look at Joseph's admirable character, we will see honestly, honesty, dedication, accountability, goodwill, and a strong faith in God. He sent Potiphar faithfully, and when his wife attempted to commit immorality with him, he refused it. We should think and be dedicated like yourself in our life. Being honest and hardworking bring promotion or elevation in our lives. Like Joseph, Ruth also experienced God's promotion. Ruth was a mobile woman married to an Israelite. When her husband died, she showed an incredible loyalty to her husband's mother. She sent her old mother-in-law with devotion, not minding the fact that she was still young and could pick her choice of men. She also showed deep devotion to God of Israel by accepting to worship the same God with her mother-in-law. Of course, God promoted her bounteously. Firstly, she got married to a good wealthy man, Boaz, a relative of Naomi. And through that marriage, Ruth made a history in Israel by becoming the great grandmother of David, the greatest king of Israel. Ruth gave birth to Obed, who became the father of Jesse. Now, let's look at the moral lessons from serving God. They are one. The hallmark of every service life is faithfulness. Therefore, 
as a leader, servants, we should be faithful in discharging our duties. As a leader or servant, we should try and oppose our integrity throughout our period of servitude, just as Joseph did. Three, we need to be transparent and honest so that after our service year, it will be reckoned on us. For good name is better than wealth. Whether. Four, when one is loyal, then he can serve well. Loyalty should be our watchword, just as Joseph was to Pharaoh and Ruth to her mother-in-law. Five, in any service place we find ourselves, we ought to consider others, be able to understand their pains at all times. Ability to serve rather than being served is very paramount as it is in the case of Joseph. Problems of services. These are the problems one can encounter when serving others. Service goes with sufferings and difficulties. It is very certain that as long as one is involved in serving people in whatever capacity, there must be problems. Such problems depend on the nature of one's service and the place where the person is serving. Let us consider some. 1. Seduction, Exodus 39, verse 7. Joseph was engaged in active and honest service in Pontifar House, and his master's wife desired to relate with him sexually. And Joseph and said to Joseph, Be with me. Joseph's refusal gave rise to his imprisonment. However, the conduct of Joseph becomes a lesson to youths today to be ready to resist such requests from evil minded people. Two, rejection and suffering. Joseph was abandoned in prison by Potiphar because of his faithful service. Three, conspiracy and false witness. People group themselves together in order to conspire and lay false witness against others. For example, the brothers of Joseph conspired to sell and kill their brother due to wickedness and hatred. Four, bribery and corruption. Five, jealousy. Six, lies. Seven, damaging and malicious gossips. Eight, actions of good intention being misinterpreted and misunderstood. Nine, constant punishments harsh treatment and calling of bad names. 10. Hatred, enmity, avoidance and isolation by the higher authorities. 11. Sexual abuse and harassment. 12. Victimization and injustice, that is, making people suffer without cause and unjustly. Students, Remember that I say that our topic for today will be based on call to service and life in God's service. Now let us enter into the second lesson, life in God's service. 1 Peter 2, 18 to 25. God is a supreme being. He sees all things, both in secret and in open. He knows the intents of the heart. You cannot hide anything from his presence because he is the omnipresent, and you cannot hide anything from, his, or from him because he is the omniscient. All things lay bare before him and is not hidden. Christians are expected by God to serve in spite of all odds. We must not serve with murmuring and grumbling. Peter, in his letter to the churches on exile, explained the true meaning of service. Here, he advised the servants to be submissive to their masters, not only to the kind and gentle ones, but also to the difficult ones. He makes it clear that it is better for one to suffer for doing the right, rather than to suffer for one's wrongdoing. Suffering patiently for right conduct attracts God's approval, because in the same way, Christ suffered for us without doing any wrong. In this sense, Christ becomes a true example of his service. He bore our sin and lived in righteousness, and by his wounds we have been healed. 
Service requires patience, trusting in God, who is the right judge. Reward of service, promotion and long life. You can see this in Genesis 41, 37 to 43. Every good service has its rewards. We can see how Joseph was rewarded for his good services in, in Genesis 37, 37 to 43. After Joseph had explained the dream to Pharaoh and also advised him on what to do, this proposal seemed good to Pharaoh and to all his servants. And Pharaoh said to his servants, Can we find such a man as this? Who is so who is the Spirit of God? So Pharaoh said to Joseph, Since God has shown you all this, there is none as discreet, as wise as you are. For this reason, Pharaoh promoted Joseph so high, and he said to him, Behold, I have set you all over the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh took his signet ring from his hand and put it on Joseph's hand, and arrayed him in garments of fine linen, and put gold chain about his neck, and made him to ride in his second chariot, and they cried before him, bowed their kneel. Thus he sets him over all the land of Egypt. There is an expected lifestyle in God's service, and the Holy Bible stipulated them. Though in service we serve men, but our service is ultimately to God, and God rewards faithfulness in service, like he rewarded Joseph with promotion and long life. In summary, like we defined before, service is the act of serving others. There are several examples of people who served in the Bible. Joseph and Ruth were among them. Joseph, on, the, on one hand, was one of the 12 sons of Jacob, whose mother was Rachel. He was filled with divine knowledge to understanding things through dreams. And this made the brothers to hate him, giving him the name Joseph the Dreamer. The brother of Joseph sold him to Egypt because of envy, hatred, and wickedness. But God was with Joseph at Egypt. From prison, he was promoted to prime minister in Egypt. And his service, many lives, and in his service, many lives were saved. Ruth, on the other hand, served Naomi faithfully, and God favored her as Boaz's wife. In God's service, servants should respect their masters, and service requires patience with, God, with trust in God, who is the right judge. Hope you enjoyed the lesson. So let's go through these evaluation questions to test our ability. One, explain the meaning of service. Two, narrate the sale of Joseph into Egypt. Three, mention examples of people who served in the Bible. Four, list the lessons from the service of Joseph and Ruth. Five, mention the moral lessons. Six, describe the call of Christians to God's service and humanity. Seven, write down the problems of service. Eight, relate the rewards of service. You are going to read up the following passages. Genesis 37, 12 to 36. Genesis 47, 31 to 57. Ruth 11, 7 to 18. First Peter 2, 18 to 25. Genesis 41, 37 to 43. Answer the evaluation questions and send them to my WhatsApp contacts. And if you also have any questions, you can chat me through my WhatsApp contact 0817-477-4841. Thanks for listening and see you next time.